G'day there. Well, today I've got with me the new Surface 3. This is not the Pro 3. This is actually the Microsoft Surface 3. It's kind of like the little brother or sister of the Surface Pro 3. Um, a continuation, I guess, of the previous lines of Surface, the Surface 2 and the Surface RT. But this time, the Surface 3 actually comes with an Intel Atom processor. That's different to the previous models in that it actually runs a full proper version of Windows so you can run all of your standard Windows programs on the desktop as well as the new modern apps in the store in Windows 8 and Windows 10. So to test out the Surface 3, first of all I set it up with an external screen via the docking station to see how it could work as a laptop replacement. I've got three things running across the two screens here. Uh, first of all you can see I've got my Outlook window on the left, I've got a fairly complicated Word document here on the right and then I've got a web page open here on the Surface screen. So this is a multi-screen setup like you'd really want in an office situation. And I'll just go over to the Word document here. You can see it's a fairly complicated Word document. Uh, there's lots of detail. It scrolls really nicely. And it even shows up all of my content really well, the pictures and the, even the digital ink on the document itself. Coming back across to Outlook, you can see that scrolling through Outlook, it works pretty well. It may be a little bit slower than I'd normally expect on the Surface Pro 3, but it does just fine. Now switching into tablet mode to have a look at how this works as a web browser, you can see that there's a really nice touch web browser of course in Windows 8, but also if you want to, you can switch across to the desktop mode and use a desktop browser. So it could be IE like I'm using here, or it could be Chrome, Firefox, Safari, whatever kind of browser you prefer to use, you can use because this is a PC here. But back in the touch environment here, you can see that um, one of the beauties of Windows 8 is that I can easily open tabs from other devices that I have and here on my Windows phone for example I can go across there and pick up a tab that I had open on my phone and look at it here on the Surface 3 so that's uh, a feature that works across Windows 8 but it's a really really good feature it makes it really easy to switch between devices and look at content on whatever there is the best screen for that particular job one of the most important things for me was to see how the Surface 3 would work with the Surface Pro 3 pen and taking notes in OneNote. So I've got the Surface Pro 3 pen, it's the same as the Surface 3 pen. Button on the back launches OneNote, just like it does on the Pro 3. And I've got it tied into the desktop version of OneNote. You might also use the app version of OneNote, which is this one here, the modern version. One of the key things about the Surface Pro 3 pen, compared to most of the other pen systems that are around, is that it's really nice, it has a really nice feel on the screen, it's really quite, it's really actually quiet. There's not a lot of noise when I tap the pen on the screen there. And that is actually a really good feature. I'm just going to finally test to see how quickly it does ink to text here. Yeah, it actually does it pretty well, so not bad at all. Really quite a similar experience to what I'd expect in on the Surface Pro 3. Not a lot of difference there. Let's do a blank document now and I'll use the handwriting recognition just to see how that works on the Surface 3 pretty impressive, there you go, I haven't trained that or anything, it's just really come straight out of the box alright, and now I can add a little bit of ink and you can see even in Word here there's not a lot of lag which is great let me get a thicker pen just to test out the pressure sensitivity. Look at that, fantastic. To see how the Surface 3 would go for gaming, I brought in my daughter to see how she could play Minecraft on the device. That was one of the key criteria I had for purchasing the Surface 3 was can it Minecraft? Because uh, you know my wife's Surface is always being occupied by the kids playing Minecraft and I wanted to be able to shift that off and let her use her Surface again. And so I got my daughter in to uh, test out and see how Minecraft went. And I was really surprised to see that, you know what, there isn't much of a compromise at all in doing things like three-dimensional uh, gaming like that. Now, I'm not suggesting that the Surface 3 is a gaming machine. It's not for high-end gaming at all. But for that sort of online-based, lightweight sort of gaming, the Surface 3 is surprisingly good. Okay, and the last thing that I'm going to do is to test... Photoshop and you can see that I've just plugged in my USB stick on the side of the tablet here. Isn't it fantastic to be able to do that? Now I'm going to go and open up this file which is the uh, 
raw file straight off my camera. One of the things that I do when I'm out in the field is I actually plug in my camera memory straight into my tablet, usually the Surface Pro 3, and I start editing photos when I'm actually still out in the field. That's just an awesome thing to be able to do with the device. So let's see how quickly it can load up the raw camera file off of that USB stick. Not bad. Not actually bad at all. So if you wanted to use this for a little bit of field editing, wow, that's a pretty impressive option. Let's have a bit of a play with the settings. Wow, that's incredible to see how quickly it applies those graphic settings there. Let's expand the image out a little bit so we can see it a bit more detailed. Wow, that's actually really, really fast. That's every bit the equivalent of what you get on the Surface Pro 3. So that's actually really, really amazing. And let's just take it a little bit further. Let's just say those are the settings that we wanted. Make it a little bit ridiculous there. There we go. Now I'll open up the image. Let's see how long that takes. Not too bad at all. It's really not much of a compromise. Okay, and let's uh, go and do one of the other common tasks that I do, is, which is recropping and realigning my photos. Yeah, look at that. That's fantastic, actually. Very, very nicely done. That's something that some of the machines sometimes struggle with, is being able to render that sort of rotation so quickly. And there we go. So, yeah, as a light use field editing device for photographs, I'd say, you know what, this is not too bad. It might struggle a little bit with a whole mass of photos if you're doing 200 photos at once, perhaps in Lightroom. But if you're just editing one-on-one -on -one photos like this, not bad at all. So I've seen a lot of really positive and interesting reviews of the Surface 3 online so far. Um, but a lot of them have compared the Surface 3 perhaps to a laptop, for example. One of the things that I think is really compelling about the Surface tablets altogether is the fact that they switch between a laptop and a tablet so easily and so quickly. Just to demonstrate, I fold the kickstand up, I flip that around and I'm now in tablet mode. I open it up again, I pull the kickstand out there, and I'm ready to use it as a laptop again. So for example, when I'm on the plane and the uh, flight attendant comes past and says, alright sir, you need to put your laptop away now, done. The Surface series, the ability to leave the keyboard in place, it, the keyboard actually turns off as you fold it past halfway there, so it automatically turns itself off. But the ability to do that, just flip it around, keep the keyboard on, and keep using the device as a tablet makes it probably, well I think it's the most portable option, the most mobile option that there is going around. And for me, that feature alone makes the Surface series the most compelling thing that's out there. So my selection after having a look and comparing the performance of those devices versus the Surface Pro 3 versus the Surface 3, I'm very comfortable using the Surface 3. It's not going to meet my needs, my personal needs in terms of being able to do video editing and photo editing and things like that. But for my daughters for example who are doing their schoolwork, needing to take notes, reading, all those sorts of things, this device is a really good option for them and so I've actually purchased two of them for my daughters to, uh, to do their schoolwork on. In addition to that, if I was just a, an executive who used Word and Excel and Outlook 99% of the time and I travelled around and wanted to take a few meeting notes and things like that, then again the Surface 3 would probably be okay for that purpose.